the fact that, you know, you, you talked about uh, federal agents being sent into Portland, how they're Trump loyalists. Uh, you also have the police basically doing the same thing. I, I often see, I've seen many different instances uh, of police working with or at least giving a nod to these military or excuse me, militia groups, far right militia groups. Um, do you get a sense that there is a real relationship going on between uh, police departments and these militia groups and and maybe even federal agents? And maybe I'll point that to Alexander first um, and bring it to yeah. Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think it's significant. I think um, you know from the right wing uh, perspective, they've been sort of building this up for a long time. Um, but they did make a radical pivot, um, which is to say, you know, the anti-government ish kind of libertarianism against, uh, you know, liberal democracy, whether it's Reagan or, you know, Dukakis or whatever, um, has, uh, has, been substituted for a kind of pro Trump governmentalism, <laughs> like uh, because he represents the elimination of what they've hated for so long, which is, you know, the checks on power that liberal democracy presents, which actually tend to better the condition of people who are not mediocre white males. Um, <laughs> So, uh, that has been quite, uh, you know, I think unexpected, uh, and I don't think that a lot of people who have been working on this for a long time really saw it coming before, you know, the, the real kind of, you know, uh, hangover of November 2016 started to clear. Um, and I just like w they've been uh, presenting themselves even like died in the wool Nazis have been coming out and and waving the thin blue line flag and chanting back the blue and blue lives matter right and this this absolutely gives them uh um camouflage you know it's it's uh it enables them to present themselves as law and order uh when what they what they really want is you know the complete destruction of any framework of democracy um even republicanism you know in in the right wing sort of framing of it and uh and police have i think because of the movement to reform the police and the criticism of the police as a systemically racist institution, um, been extremely susceptible to this kind of, you know, uh, um, uh, far right wing temptation. And so, you know, you get what you saw in Kenosha where police are just tossing water bottles and, 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 and hanging out with these, uh, uh, right wing vigilantes. And according to the vigilantes, even, you know, basically coordinating with them saying, we're actually going to push the protesters to you guys because you guys know what you're doing, oh, you know, man. which, which is just slap yourself in the face. Stupid. You know, that is just like bang your head into a brick wall. Dumb to, 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 uh, presume that, you know, a white supremacist, 31 year old and a 17 year old, you know, guy who's got a serious infatuation with police uniforms are going to be able to contend with, you know, a thousand angry, you know, uh, uh, protesters in the street. It's, 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 I think one of the most irresponsible situations i've ever seen uh police create in the united states um and we're seeing that kind of stuff happening in a lot of places right like uh, uh denver colorado police you know uh, according to the militia here uh or one of the militia members um basically calling out the militia and asking them to come out um 
I, I don't necessarily trust that guy. Uh, but it is true that they, you know, spoke. And, and often what the police will say is, uh, we were aware of their presence, but we didn't ask them to come. Right. Well, if you're aware of their presence, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, like, what it takes to just be like, guys, you know, don't do this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, 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 and the dead giveaway here is that so often on right wing media, their total intimidation of protesters uh, is viewed as a victory. Um, and this is the second thing that's changed. Not only are, you know, the far right inclusive of fascists, um, basically presenting themselves as the arbiters of, uh, law and order where the police are being restrained by this deep state cabal. Um, but I don't know. Um, they're, uh, um, Shit, I lost my train of thought. They're just they're they're, <laughs> they're, they're okay. coordinating. They're, they're coordinating with the police in in a in a manner that's totally unprecedented. I don't know. I, I'll yeah. I'll pass it over to Shane because uh, I think I think my brain is is uh, is bleeding at this point. It's okay, mine too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe my my memory will will return at some point, but I don't no, know. You're good. Yeah, if Shane, you had anything to say about that? My brain's not doing that much better either. I, you know, I think Sasha touched on something that's really important about the coordination with the police union. You know, part of the kind of radicalization of police behavior, it's hard to even say if it is radicalization, but I think there's a particular type of police behavior happens uh, in a lot of ways through these kind of non-state police institutions, uh, the police union acting as sort of the vanguard of this particular kind of cultural space for the police and advocating for this police in a certain way that even the department itself as a part of the larger state couldn't really do. Um, and I think also um, there is this, you know, historic connection between the police and a lot of these organizations like the constitutional sheriffs and peace officers association yeah. that helps to kind of work to connect the militia movement, or at least the ideology of the militia movement with the authority of local police and kind of trumpeting up a very, very uh, kind of venerable attitude to sheriffs and local authorities. So it's, this is this happens and this takes place. And I think as the movement to reform the police really ramps up and it really is. And people are I think the, the kind of demands that are being made now aren't the kind we've seen in the last 20 or 30 years. And I, I think it, there's follow through that can come from that. I, I think that, that, that what's happening is they're doubling down and retreating into the ideological core that makes up those groups like the police unions and fighting back and fighting for their own interests in a way, uh, the interests that they've developed through this police union apparatus over the last 60, 70 years. Um, and so I don't see a reason to believe that they're necessarily going to back away from that um, unless they're somehow forced to by a really mass movement of reformers and that kind of thing. Um, but it does seem that they are incapable of responding to the police protests with anything other than using aggressive force, which at this point is the opposite of what is going to end them. And so I think continuing to kind of collaborate with the militia is only escalating those sorts of things. And what we're starting to see, we saw it here in Portland on August 22nd when there was a Back the Blue rally where Proud Boys and other people were, was that they refused to intervene in that and essentially let the Proud Boys – and Patriot Prayer members and other far right people do what they want unimpeded. And with, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse in our rearview mirror and a lot of these threats and returns from the Proud Boys coming to Portland, I think there's a lot of fears about what police are essentially going to allow them to do. And so I think that there's this two levels of police violence we're talking about now. We're talking about the police, the violence that people, that police, you know, do to protesters or they do to uh, communities of color when they're shooting uh, unarmed folks on their back. And there's also the violence that they refuse to uh, stop or they refuse to intervene in or they are they allowed to take place in their absence. And so I, I'm concerned about kind of both of those things that are happening as this vigilante activity ramps up. And since they really are appealing to a sort of apocalyptic political sensibility that's been brewing and they're willing to play conspiracy theories and, you know, constantly trumpet uh, hyper like uh, stories of protester violence, that is going to help to build the militia and vigilante numbers as well. 